All right, talking to Mark from Suicide Silence. The album Become the Hunter is out right now. It dropped on February 14th. It's out in the world. It's done and dusted. How are you feeling about it all? So great, dude. Feel really good so far. You know, everybody's been responding to it really well. Um, you know, I heard pretty much immediately because it's out in near you guys before anywhere. So I got like, mm. you know, analytics and all that stuff going on. And like, you know, thanks to the Aussie New Zealand, you know, fans, because I know that in, on iTunes, we're like number 12 overall. And like number one in metal and number two in rock, like within, you know, 24 hours. So it's like super, super cool. Um, and also, you know, we've been, we, we were ready to put this record out last year, but we just, barely missed the uh, the holidays. We wanted to have it out in November, but it just didn't come together right, so we kind of had to look for the best time to put it out, and it was February, so we've been waiting like, you know, November to, to drop it, so it feels really good that the wait is over and everybody, everybody's out there and can enjoy it. Yes, yeah, so February 14th, uh, yeah, International Valentine's Day, was this deliberate? Yeah, well, you know, the, the I'm transparent, dude. I don't give a shit. We were gonna <laughs> release the record on Black on on Black Friday, but uh, we mm. we couldn't uh, we couldn't get the artwork and everything run, and vinyl wouldn't have been ready for the release, and we didn't want mm. to. We wanted it all to be released at once, so we couldn't. We didn't make that happen, and it sucked. But then you know we're like, hey man, like we already planned on Love Me to Death being the first single, so like let's release Love Me to <laughs> Death and and announce it as Valentine's Day and do it as a whole kind of marketing thing. Uh, it was it was slightly intentional, but also like our second choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like people will always appreciate, especially when it comes to artists, uh, waiting a little more because you want to polish it and make it perfect and really, you know, hone your craft and not put out something that's not finished. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's also... Uh you know, with this record, you know, the, the process of putting it all together was very much that. Like, we didn't really have any deadlines, and there was no one really telling us uh, when we had to do anything. And uh, in the end, we ended up being in the studio, I think, like two months later than we were actually like ready to. So we were we wrote so much music for this record, and then really narrowed it down to what we ended up recording. Uh, so, like, this record is, you know. Uh, Right now, you know, uh, it is, it, it, it's pretty much, uh, how do I want to say it? State of the art suicide silence because we really had all the time that we needed and, and we just put all this energy into this record and, uh, we're, we're super stoked. It is definitely sounding like, uh, premium suicide silence. I mean, we probably should mention the juxtaposition between the last record, the self titled one you put out that was, uh, definitely experimental in a way this album seems like uh a return to form for you guys is that accurate to say yeah um the way that i've been really summing it up is every record we've ever written um has been written with the fans in mind and the live show in mind mm-hmm. and we're just trying to have like a live show that's super fucking awesome and a record that's enjoyable to listen to, you know, on its own. Once we got to our fifth record and we hadn't really done any experimenting, hadn't really done anything that was like outside of our wheelhouse. Um, we were just, it was like a perfect storm of, you know, we had Ross Robinson tapped as a producer. And we were in the mindset of wanting to really just go wherever, you know, we wanted to go personally and not, uh, not really, you know, it sucks, but like we weren't thinking about fans. We were, all we were thinking about was like, let's have this process be experimental and enjoyment of, uh, working with this producer that we've, you know, looked up to for so long. Um, so we really kind of abandoned the normal way that we would write a record and we did something really far out there. And um, I would say that obviously, you know, a majority of the people, you know, they wanted their, you know, deathcore pizza and we delivered them, you know, an ice cream sundae <laughs> and they weren't really stoked. And, uh, and it's understandable. And uh, I think that with this record, it's really, it is a return to form as far as process and 
uh, you know, how we would normally write a record. Um, and it's also kind of, you know, you know, whoever, whoever is, is here still, if we lost you along the way of the journey of experimentation, then that's fine. But like, you know, we're, we're still, we're still here for the, for the fans and who's, who's, you know, who wants to, you know, still partake in Suicide Silence. And we're, you know, always going to be grateful for anybody that's there listening. Uh, and it's kind of, you know, we're thankful for anybody that allowed us to like go on that experimental journey and kind of like, you know, do some soul searching. Mm -hmm. Is that a, is a, is a strange time for all of us? You know, definitely. There's a lot of things going on at that time. Yeah. Uh, damn. <laughs> I mean, if if anybody has, yeah, that was really good. Um, no, if anybody has definitely left, I feel like this album is absolutely bringing Suicide Sounds back for a lot of people, uh, especially because what well, with you you guys releasing singles as well as three videos as well, putting the cinematography spin on this album as well. Uh, where did the idea come from? All this? Uh, that was. Um well, it was, it was us sitting around, same way we always do, we're like thinking about how, what we're going to do with the music videos and really trying to, you know, stretch a budget. That's the other mm -hmm. thing. It's like, no, there's a lot of money to spend, spend on, on making music videos. And we could have made, you know, two music videos and like, you know, we could have been involved in it and had a, a two crews and, you know, all this, but we kind of were trying to think of how do we streamline making something like really interesting. Uh, you know, fun and artistic and, you know, exemplifies the, kind of the concept of, of Become the Hunter and like what the lyrics are about. So we, we, with our manager, we wrote that, uh, that story that is a three part, uh, music video. And, you know, it was just kind of, you know, it came together pretty naturally, um, just as a way to, uh, also, make it so that we didn't have to be in any of the music videos <laughs> because uh, there, there was there was just there was other uh, so many things keeping us from being able to actually record uh, or, or, or film uh, videos and we're like let's save it we, we could do a live video later which we did for two steps um, but we wanted we wanted something that was going to be fucking edgy like we normally do something that's gory and you know still suicide silence and then also it had the campy element, which we got Jared Dimes to be in the video again, mm -hmm. and like that's kind of funny. Mm -hmm. A little bit of relief from like the serious nature of the of the videos. Um, but I think we, yeah, I think we wanted to do. Uh, we, we always wanted to not be in the music videos and make like a little short movie, and uh, it was kind of fun. We kind of like secretly got to like kind of direct uh, from from behind the scenes the the music video. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of, it, it, it was just an idea of a way to uh, make it all work, make sense, and give give some give people something to enjoy. You know, we we know this is a return. We know people are like waiting to see what we do next. So we're like, let's make it fucking brutal the whole fucking time. Like, let's just just give them some fucking sick shit. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely been a couple of occasions where I've had to explain what I'm watching, and it's not just a horror movie. <laughs> Come, like Netflix, I've had to explain that it's coming out for Suicide mm -hmm. Island, which is fantastic. Ah, oh, man. All right, so one question I have to ask uh, is, you guys are released a new album. You guys are doing fantastically. You're going to tour with Ginger really soon, but is there any chance of coming down to Australia? Um, yeah, I, I can't say that there's any um, serious, uh, like, you know, offer or... or Plan, but uh, we are. I am trying to get uh, December or January. I have been talking about it. Like, let's get down there and try and get on this Good Things Festival. Yeah, and and you know, you know maybe do do a little do a little tour around that, and also like get New Zealand and probably go to Asia and do like a whole thing over there. Which yeah, we gotta do. We gotta do. We haven't been over. Last time we were in Australia was like twenty. Was it twenty fifteen? I think, like five years ago. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah we got to get down there. It's been a while. That would be amazing. And, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure the crowd would agree that we definitely need you back down here. Uh, I am uh, almost out of time. I'll say again, Become the Hunter is out right now. Those music videos are 
kicking ass and, well, everything's just exploding for you guys in 2020. Uh, we will pump the hell out of Become the Hunter and, hey, good luck. And good luck working off that hangover, too. Thanks, brother. Yeah, I appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks very much, man. Uh, hopefully we'll talk to you soon and see you sometime soon as well. Well, my sir. Peace.